concern, I guess, for the future is the fact that these uh, social media companies have so much power Mm -hmm. to determine who gets to speak and who doesn't. And not only that, but behind closed doors, these far left wing activists are really pulling the strings in these social media networks. I was looking this morning because we're recording this Tuesday, so it'll go to air on Wednesday. Um, and Tommy was just kicked off of Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. I guess the news would have broken today. So on yeah, Tuesday. A few hours ago, yeah. Yeah, a few hours ago. And again, at the Rebel, we're going to do everything we can, like we always do, <laughs> to help them. Um, I guess we're his de facto, like, army of fixers for him but there is this activist calls himself a broadcaster his name is Mohammed Shafiq um I went to his Twitter account and he says he's a Muslim broadcaster on TV radio uh, uh, he's a columnist chief executive of the Ramadan Foundation um and he is on the BBC five live and he's a regular contributor for um Putin's mouthpiece RT and I went and I, I don't know why he made it clear that he's a Muslim broadcaster. I don't make it clear that I'm a Catholic broadcaster. I think people just eventually figure it out. But <laughs> um, what I, I went through his Twitter feed and he said that uh, he had met with Facebook. He did about banning Tommy Robinson and Facebook complied with his request. That's all it takes these days for normal people to just get booted. Some activists with a big platform working for Russia, might I add, can get uh, somebody kicked off of uh, Facebook. And he actually tweeted this seven hours ago. Next meeting to be arranged very shortly is with YouTube and Google here in the UK to ensure that Tommy Robinson is banned from their platforms. So, I mean, the wheels are already in motion. This activist is claiming responsibility for having Tommy Robinson banned. And the worst part is this person claims to be a journalist. They're advocating for free speech, not just or advocating for censored speech, but not just that. They're not even just a proponent of censoring speech. They're actually part of the mechanism that does it. It's really appalling. Yeah, it's it's. um... It's like a version of almost, you know, when you think of really, you know, any movie you've ever watched growing up about the the evils of crony capitalism and the big businessmen and all the dirty deeds going on and behind the scenes. And of course, we know this does happen in real life as well in politics. It's like that, except for specifically, we're talking about a way to silence people, a way to completely silence an opposing point of view. And I wasn't necessarily surprised when I found out that it was him who had essentially started this fight against, you know, wanting to get him banned. And I'm not surprised that the company bowed down to it because right now it seems there are certain buzz issues that are, you know, very, very key in the discussion about left versus right thinking, you know, conservative versus liberals and essentially what is acceptable and what is not to say out loud. And of course, one of those major issues, um, along with, um, I guess you could say feminism is a big one. So the gender stuff, uh, I would say transgender issues are the number one big one. How you feel about that apparently determines whether or not you are worthy of even being alive. So there's that issue. Yeah. Um, there's several others. Immigration is a big one, of course. If you want limited immigration or you have concerns about illegal immigration, that automatically makes you into some sort of bad person. And a big, big one that I'm learning and, and kind of diving into and learning about more this past year is Islam and Islamism and political Islam. And A, a lot of citizens don't know the difference. Um, but B, there is a fair bit of evidence to suggest that we should be at least mildly concerned about Islamism and political Islam in the West. And I've been re- reading a lot of Imam Tawidi, uh, who is, of course, the Imam mm-hmm. of peace. And it's very eye opening. And sadly, we can't even use those proper terms and speak of this in a very diplomatic way about talking about preventative safety and the very real travesties that have gone on in Europe since, you know, a lot of their uh, mass migration issues uh, 2014 and forward and the deaths that have occurred and the terrorist attacks that have occurred. I 